we now want to ask the question with what velocity does it actually hit the ground with? And one piece of misconception that a lot of students have is, well, when the object hits the ground or returns to its original position, like in my hand, the object comes to a stop. So therefore, the final velocity must be zero. But that's not the question we're looking for. What we're looking for is, with what velocity does it impact the ground or impact my hand or a glove uh, in the case of maybe a baseball or something of that nature, okay? So we're actually looking for the speed that it's traveling with when it uh, collides with its original position, okay? Now, the claim, my claim is this. The final velocity equals negative the initial velocity, okay? That's my claim. My final velocity is equal to negative my initial velocity. I'm going to leave my coordinate system the same, okay? So positive is in the up direction, and uh, downward is negative. And I'm actually going to erase the question now, save a little board space. Okay, so first things first, we know that the time it took from the previous video for one half of the flight to go from here to here was the initial velocity it was launched with over G. Okay, we no also know that the uh, change in position, right? the maximum height from the bottom to the peak was also given by uh, that expression right there, right? And so what we want to do now is actually prove that it takes the exact same amount of time to start from here and fall uh, as it does to rise and then we'll plug that time back into the very first kinematic equation, okay? So what we're gonna do now is actually start looking at the motion here, okay? We're going to assume it's risen up to its peak and then it's going to fall back down. Now, here's where a lot of people are confused, okay? I'm gonna redraw my coordinate system up here and technically, what we have to do is define this as y initial and this is y final if we're looking at the motion upward and since delta y means final minus initial I'm gonna take this final peak minus this initial position and since this is a positive quantity since upward is positive this is a positive quantity okay but if I analyze the motion on the way down and I make if I make this y initial and ground level y final okay if I do that and I look at the motion downward here y final minus y initial zero minus something positive is going to give me a negative number. So on the way down, delta y is negative, okay? So on the way down, delta y is negative, okay? And so what we can do now is use the second kinematic equation and, and let's give our initial conditions. If I'm gonna analyze the motion from the peak downward, then that means that V peak is my initial velocity in this, in this case, okay? So we can ignore the initial velocity it was launched with, right? We can ignore the initial velocity that was launched with and the initial velocity in the problem of starting at the peak means that our initial velocity is zero. Okay, for, for this portion. Now, what we can do is write down the second kinematic equation.
Okay. But we know that if we start at the peak, the starting velocity is zero, and so this term goes away. And I'm left with one half gt squared. Now, gravity is always acting downward, so I technically need to insert a negative sign here, okay? And on the way down, delta y is negative, so I need to insert a negative sign here, okay? And now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we know this is how high, we know this is the displacement upward, and so that must be the same displacement downward. Okay, so our maximum displacement upward must be the same displacement only in the negative direction as the displacement downward. If I launch something from the ground, to the ground it will return, if I could catch, right? If I launch something from the ground, to the ground it must return. So this must be the same distance from here to here, okay? So I can insert this expression for uh, the displacement from here to here, only with the negative sign. Where here, once again, vi is now, again, the initial velocity it was launched with, not what we considered the initial velocity of the peak, okay? And this is gonna equal 1 half gt squared, and if I want to solve for t, okay, I want to solve for t, I want to know how long it's going to take to fall, right? And my twos go away, and uh, I need to carry the negative sign. My negative signs will cancel out, and I'm going to get vi squared. If I divide both sides by g, I get g squared in the denominator, and that equals t squared. And so now the time that it takes to fall from here, I can find by taking the square root. And we can see that the time it takes to fall from here to here is exactly the same as the time it took to get from here to here. And thus we can claim that the um, paths on each side of the peak are indeed symmetric. So if I plug this time into my first kinematic equation, what velocity does that give me? Okay. So the velocity, the final velocity, and again, we're going to consider the motion from the peak. So if I write down generically the uh, expression, we have this, but If I'm starting at the peak, my initial velocity is zero. If I'm falling, my acceleration is negative g. And I'm gonna plug in vi over g for my time since that's what I just found. And we can see my g's cancel out. And indeed, my final velocity is equal to the initial velocity that I launched the object with. And so, we can see that indeed the motions are exactly symmetric on both sides of the peak. So that is um, a proof of the uh, symmetrization of projectile motion. Next video, we'll do a few examples.